Okay, so I've got two discs, same material. Disc A weighs 10 pounds, radius of uh, 6. Disc B is twice as thick as disc A. <coughs> uh, I apply a couple moment at disc A, uh, and I want to find the radius of disc B so that the angular velocity is 480 RPMs after five revolutions. So again, I'm trying to find the velocity uh, at a specific position number of revolutions. So velocity position means um, energy, right? So my governing equation on this one is going to be Ke1 plus the work from 1 to 2 equals Ke2, the final kinetic energy. So this thing starts from rest, so again Ke1 goes to 0. Okay, uh, work from 1 to 2 Okay, really the only thing working on this guy is the moment, right? And the equation for uh, the work due to a moment is going to be that moment times the uh, change in position. Okay, now the moment is constant, so this is just really the moment times uh, the change in position, which is going to be 22 uh, pound feet, okay? times the uh, five revolutions, right? So it's going to be five, but I want this all in radians, so it's going to be times two pi, which gives me the work being done of 691, and that's really the only work being done uh, on this system here. Okay, and of course that equals Ke2, which is the um, kinetic energy uh, at the <coughs> end, which is really what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to, f well, I guess I, uh, more, more. Uh, I guess I know the final angular velocity I'm trying to find, basically the masses uh, on this, or the radius. Anyway, let me write the equation and then we'll go from there. So again, what I have is the um, kinetic energy, which is just rotation here. I have no translation, so it's going to be one-half I omega squared. So I will have, for the first one, I will have one-half times the moment of inertia of disk A, which is going to be uh, one-half mR squared, right? So that's because it's a disk, so it'll be one-half, where m is um, 10 pounds divided by the acceleration due to gravity to get it to mass, okay, times uh, omega squared, uh, wait, no, sorry, I'm not done with I, so it's one half I, uh, I'm sorry, one half mR squared, R is six inches, I need that in feet because the, the moment is in feet as well as the um, acceleration of gravity, so that's going to be six divided by twelve, the one half. So again, that is I, which is one half mR squared. And again, that's going to be times the final velocity, which is 480 um, RPM. So let's just quickly figure out what that is. So 480 revs per minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that times 2 pi radians per revolution and divide it by um, 60 seconds per minute. And from that, I get that my final angular velocity is 50.3 radians per second. Okay? So that's what I'm going to plug in here. So that is <coughs> that is the kinetic energy of disk A. Now the kinetic energy of disk B I don't really know. So at this point I'm just going to say it's one half I of B um, omega squared. Right? They have the same omega. They're connected by that shaft. Okay. So in this sort of a situation I know everything except I of B. And I'll, I'll solve what that is and then back out the radius from that. Okay. So again I start with no kinetic energy plus the work done which is 691, that equals 49.04, which is I, uh, or the kinetic energy of A, okay, plus the 
plus that'll be 1263 IB. So from that I can calculate that IB needs to be 0 0.508 and that's going to be slug feet squared just based on everything that I've got there, okay? Now, what I need to do now is set that equal to the moment of inertia of IB. So what I'm going to have here is 0 0.508 equals again 1 half MR squared, where R is really what I'm trying to find. M, I know it's the same density of my other one, right? So what I have here is then one half rho times the volume r squared. Let me take two seconds and figure out what rho is, right? The definition of rho is going to be mass divided by volume, right? Which is going to be for disk A is going to be 10 divided by 32.2 all over the volume, which is uh, basically pi r squared, which is, again, 6 twelfths, need it in feet, times the thickness, which is b. Okay? Therefore, rho is equal to 0 0.395 divided by b. Going back up to my i equation up here, so it's going to be 1 half times rho, which again I just found to be 0 0.3 nine five divided by b times the volume of this disk which is going to be um, pi r squared again that's the r that I'm looking for here so that's pi r squared times the thickness which is going to be 2b times the r squared right so again that's one half this is rho, this is the volume, and then that's r squared. So again, the whole thing equals i. Now notice I've just got one big equation. My b's will cancel each other, right? The only unknown that I have here is r, and I can easily find then that r is 0 0.8 feet. So I guess I can just leave it at that. If we want it, maybe I just put it in inches really quickly, which is going to be 9.6 inches. Okay, so again, because it's velocity at a certain position, I use the um, work energy equation. Again, applying what I know about work being mass times the rotation. Know what I know about kinetic energy of uh, pure rotation, which is one half i omega squared. I can then back out uh, the r value.